Mac fans, welcome back. Today we're looking at linear referencing in QGIS 3. First up, what is linear referencing? Imagine we have a line and we have a table. The table contains a reference to our line and also has a bunch of distances. Now what linear referencing allows us to do is to use that table to place points along the line. I started looking into this because a subscriber asked a question in the comments. So thanks very much for that, Bob. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. In order to do this, we are going to need a few things. And the first thing we'll need is some lines, which I have. And then we're going to need a couple of tools. So I'm just going to install these plugins that we require for this. I'm just going to go up to all and then I will search for LRS, which is Linear Reference System Builder and Editor. And I'm going to install that one. And then I'm going to install another plugin called Locate Points Along Lines. With these two plugins installed, you can see I've got a new button at the top for Locate Points Along Lines, and I have a new dockable window for LRS. If I just close that out so it vanishes, you can get back to LRS by going up to the vector menu and pressing LRS. Now let's just have a quick look at our table setup. Over on the left hand side here is the attribute table for my lines layer. You can see I've got a my ref field and that gives the name of the line. So it might be the name of a route, could be a road name, whatever you want. And you can see in the background as I select these, it selects those lines back there. I also have a table with no geometry at all. It is just attributes and it has a common reference. So it's got the myref here, which matches up with the myref over here. And it also has a distance column as well. So we can see how these two might be tied together in the future. And because there's no geometry, if I select these, nothing happens in our map window. That table is called Bob. There's a few parts to this workflow and currently our line layer is just a line layer. It doesn't have any Z capabilities and it doesn't have any M capabilities. And so what we need to do first of all is to calibrate a root layer. And so I'm going to use locate points along lines. I'll just click on that. Up it comes and then we need an input polyline layer. So I'll use my lines for that. The output name is going to be called Calib. And for our interval, I don't want any interval. I'll just have zero. I want to keep the attributes and I want to add the end points. So what this will do is add a point at the start of a line and at the end of a line. And we're going to keep the attributes as well. So my ref will be in there too. So if I run that, you can see that we've got points at the start and the end of lines. And if I have a look at the attribute table for Calib, we have two points for each line, one at zero and one at the end of the line. This distance that is given will be in meters because I'm using the British National Grid. And if you're doing something like this that requires distance and geoprocessing, you should make sure that you're working in a projected coordinate system rather than a geographic one. If you don't know what that means, get in touch via the comments. So with our Calib, line, our Calib point file, I can now go over to LRS and hit the calibration tab. And for our input here, I'm going to use a lines layer, my lines, and the lines root field over in our attribute table. You can see my ref, that is what it will be. And the points layer is going to be Calib, the one that we've just made. The points root field is going to be my ref, and the measure field is going to be distance. Now it's defaulted to kilometers. We don't want kilometers. We are working in meters, please. And I'm just going to OK that. Now something happened, but we haven't got any output. Let's have a look at the errors tab. If anything does go wrong, you'll get errors in here. But we can see the total length of all the lines all successfully created LRS. Excellent. 
And we have an option down here to output a layer. And this is going to be my root. When we're talking in linear referencing, we do refer to lines that are gonna be used to put events along as roots. So I'm just gonna create that. Bang, and there we go. It is over in my layers panel. Now this type, the type, the geometry type, is a line string and it's M enabled. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And this is currently held in memory. You can tell that because it's got a little microchip next to it. So now we have an M enabled line layer or my roots as it is called. We can start to put our events on it. Events are the points that we will be putting along our roots at whatever distance is defined by our attribute table. So the layer with measures is not, oh, it is going to be my root. Very good. And you can see that that's the only option because it's the only M enabled line file that is in our project. And the root field is going to be my ref. So that's the name of each root. And for our events layer, we are going to be using Bob. So I'll put in Bob and the events root field is going to again be my ref. And the start measure field is going to be dist m. The output layer name is going to be LRS events. And if we've got any problems, then we're going to have a field called LRS error or err. Uh. And let's just OK that and see what happens. Our lines appear to have some events on them. Now, in my original table, I kept all of the distances below 100 meters just so I could see what was happening. And if I zoom in here, you can see that these events have been placed along the line as we wished. Fantastic. So we've now got our events layer. Imagine if I wanted all of these lines to be going in the same direction. It looks like line number three has gone the wrong way around. So how could we change that? The answer to that question lies in editing. And so if I select my original lines layer and toggle editing, you can see the editing tools come alive. Now down here, I have got advanced digitizing toolbar activated. And if you need that, you just right click on a space and activate the advanced digitizing toolbar. So what I would like to do is reverse my line. And fortunately on the advanced digitizing toolbar, we have a handy tool called reverse line. So if I just select that, I get the crosshairs and then I'm just going to choose a line that I would like to reverse. And there it is, line is reversed, smashing. So that wasn't very difficult. I'm just gonna save my edits and turn editing off. And then let's go through the whole process again. Now, one of the cool things about this is that we don't appear to need to be in a geo database in order to do this. I was just working with shapefiles and then I think what LRS is doing is creating a virtual layer. If you did want to save that virtual layer, you could just right click and save as. And I'll show you this once I've gone through the process again and we've got our events at the start of lines on that reversed line. Now this is only one way of doing this. There may be other ways. I may be missing something really, really obvious. And if that is the case, then please do let me know in the comments. Don't forget that some of these layers we've produced are held in memory. And if you wanted to make them permanent, you can just right click and make permanent. Now I tried saving one to my geo package and the data type remains as a line string. So just something to bear in mind. Very big thank you to Alan who recently donated to the Buy Me A Coffee Fund. In current times, that has kind of changed to Buy Me Yeast and Flour Fund. But thanks very much for that, Alan. Much appreciated. Please do keep the comments coming. I do my level best to answer all of them. And please don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, please do. Other than that, the only thing to say is happy mapping.